Hello there. We are continuing our series about uh, guide to chess improvement as an adult. Uh, so in this video I will uh, talk about acquiring gen general chess knowledge. So how, what is general chess knowledge uh, first of all and uh, how to acquire it. So uh, stay with me and I hope you'll find this video useful. Um, when I say uh, general chess knowledge, uh, I primarily mean positional understanding. So you should know uh, some basic strategical elements, uh, some fundamental uh, chess principles, uh, know where the pieces belong, how to play with your pawns, how to create middle game plans, and so on. So uh, how can you acquire uh, this knowledge? Well, I believe there are two steps in this process. Phase one is theoretical. So you should just learn about some general strategic and uh, positional principles uh, to play your chess. So you should know, uh, you should just know some things. Well, for example, you should know what are the values of the pieces, uh, what, what is piece, uh, uh, pieces activity, uh, what does it mean that uh, the piece is active, for example. Uh, you have to know stuff like uh, rooks belong to the open files, uh, what is the difference between a good and bad bishop, and how to know which bishop is good, which is bad. Uh, the notion of outposts, so if you have a knight, you want to... You want it to be uh, landed on an outpost. Uh, to know how to recognize weak, weak squares and weak pawns in your position and your opponent's position, and so on. So, in order to learn these things, uh, you should refer to some book dedicated to some players with uh, basic strategical concepts. Um, when uh, I, I think reading reading uh, some basic book is the most effective way to to learn um, uh, such things. Uh, I would recommend two, two books uh, for this. Uh, one is uh, Chess Strategy for the Tournament Player by Lev Albert. And another one, uh, which I think is even better, and it's definitely the, the book you, you have to read at some point. It's a classic uh, classical book, uh, Michael Steen, Simple Chess. So let me show this is... Um, I don't have Lev Albert's uh, book at the moment to show you, but I have a Simple Chess. So this is a... Not very thick book, and it had six uh, chapters, I think, and it covers all the basic uh, strategic and positional concepts you should know. And uh, really, I don't think you need to at this level uh, up to 2000 and 2200. You you don't have to know uh, basically anything, uh, no, nothing more uh, than than this, as uh, far as uh, theoretical knowledge is concerned. There are of course uh, some books. Uh, which are uh, much more advanced, which deal with pawn structures and advanced strategic and positions principles. But I think at this level you, you don't have to uh, spend your time doing this. Um, if you don't like books or you, you just want to, to watch uh, videos, I uh, can also recommend you. You'll find uh, down in the video description uh, some links. I will recommend uh, this uh, uh, video series made by Chess Diagnostics. It's called Beginner to 2000 Complete Chess Strategy. And uh, th th these videos are, are uh, really good and it, they will also, they can help you to acquire your basic theoretical knowledge about uh, uh, positional play and uh, strategy in uh, chess. So just check out the videos, uh, the link in the video's description. Um, so like I said, I think if you go through uh, something like uh, Simple Chess, if you read this book, and if you watch these videos, I think uh, this is pretty much everything you need to know as far as theory goes. So uh, once you absorb this basic theory, uh, you can switch to phase two. And phase two is to study master games and to see how these principles, uh, which you have learned on a theoretical level, are implemented in a concrete positions during the real uh, chess game. Okay, so uh, I, will, I will now talk about uh, how to study uh, master games. Uh, this is very important uh, topic and uh, also very very important thing you should do if you want to improve in chess. Okay, so th there are several ways you can study master games. Uh, I will talk about uh, two uh, two ways which uh, I find most uh, entertaining and most useful so so far. And uh, there is an active way and there is a passive way to to learn uh, these things. So active way would be uh, to use a book and a physical board. Um, you can see in this photo on the left, uh, this is what I called my chess cave. 
So this is my uh, my board and the book, and uh, I just put some small table uh, besides my bed. So the, so this is uh, I think this is very uh, fun way and active way to to do uh, chess and uh, to learn um, uh, from the master games. Uh, using of course you can do it online. You can do it on a digital board and on a computer. But using board and book uh, will create. Uh, if you can afford this, I mean, I, I I know maybe maybe you live in a small apartment and you can't afford this, but if you can afford to make some some corner uh, to put a real board uh, with a book, it will uh, create an ambient which will encourage you to take your time, to think slowly, to think more deeply. It's different than uh, putting just the position on the screen and just clicking through it. So when you actually move the pieces and you, you have to set up your board, it will uh, slow you down. This is This is my experience. And also, of course, it's, it has its charm. I mean, uh, chess is uh, chess is not a video game. Chess is an ancient, very ancient board game. Uh, so when you play this ancient game um, on the physical board, moving your uh, physical pieces, it uh, let's say it puts a soul into game. So it's it's good experience. And also, it prepares you for uh, over the board tournament because if you look. Uh, uh, only on uh, on the screen on the 2D boards. Then when you come to the tournament, you will have uh, troubles vi visualizing and calculating uh, things on a, on a physical board. So I think you should from time to time use a physical board and, and the book. Okay. So what books uh, to use? Um, and now I will recommend uh, several books which I found very very useful, which you can use to um, study uh, master games. So the first one, I already mentioned this in my previous video, is uh, Reti's book. I think th this book is the best uh, in so far. Uh, so this is a master of the chessboards. And uh, why, why do I like this uh, Richard Reti book? Uh, because uh, the games played in this book are by the old masters. So I'm talking about pre-Soviet uh, pre era and uh, pre-engine era. Um, because in the... If you, if you study games, uh, for example, of Karpov or, or some late Soviet pl uh, player, it will be very difficult to understand and to, to learn from them in this, on this level, uh, because they, there is plenty, plenty of theory. As you know, Soviet School of Chess has uh, had its own team of chess theoreticians, and Soviet theoreticians uh, made the huge advances in chess theory. Uh, so. If you, don't, if you don't know that theory, and you, you probably don't, it will be difficult to, to follow the, the, the games of Soviet masters. Um, also, if you if are talking about contemporary masters, uh, who, so Super GMs who play to, plays today, uh, this is a computer era, engine era. So uh, the modern Super GMs, first of all, know a tremendous amount of theory, and second of all, they analyze their positions uh, uh, with engines, and then uh, they often memorize uh, the positions analyzed by engines, and then they play the variations which they have previously memorized. Uh, so it's very difficult to learn something uh, from them. Uh, also, uh, if you look older masters, so uh, 19th century, uh, in, this is a so-called uh, Romantic Czechs era, um, they, they, they are very fun. So these, these games can be very entertaining to, to watch. To see, but uh, with the exception of uh, Paul Morphy and Adolf Anderson, I think you will not be able to uh, learn much uh, positional chess from from these games because the style of play was completely different different than uh, today, and it was all about attacking. It was all about uh, sacrificing pieces, and uh, there was also certain chivalry in in the chess approach. So if someone uh, offered you a gambit, you you had to accept it, it was a written rule, and so on. So I think um, the best games are the ones offered by Reti. So I, I will tell you which masters uh, does he deal with here. Uh, just let me find, okay. So he starts, starts with Adolf Anderson and Paul Morphy. Uh, those are 19th century players, but they are way, way um, in front of their time, and they play play the exec, uh, exceptional opening and openings and positional chess. So uh, Wilhelm Steinitz, of course, uh, Steinitz uh, marks uh, the new era in chess. So this is how uh, when the positional chess really became a thing. 
Uh, so you have Sigbert Tarash, Emmanuel Lasker, Karl Schlechter, Harry Nelson Pillsbury, uh, Geza Maroki, uh, Frank Marshall, Akiba Rubenstein, Rudolf Spielmann, Aron Nimcovic, Milan Widmar, Slovenia Master, uh, Tartakover, uh, Jose Raul Capablanca, Efim Bogolyubov, and Alexander Alekhain, or Aliehin. It depends uh, of your pronunciation. Uh, so y you can see, uh, I, I guess you're familiar with all these names. So these are very good masters, and they played uh, before um, the chess was uh, uh, the chess theory was so advanced and before the engines. So I think this is um, this kind of, of games will be most uh, most uh, instructive for you. Okay, but you should not stop there. Of course, uh, with, if the annotations of the game games are good, you can learn from basically from any chess game. So I will uh, recommend several books uh, which have, uh, in my opinion, uh, very good uh, annotations written. So this is uh, may maybe one of the most famous um, collection of annotating game, uh, Zurich uh, 1953 uh, tournament. This tournament was won uh, by uh, Smyslov, uh, world champion, Soviet world champion. And you can see, uh, and uh, here it's interesting because it, it has this uh, old-fashioned uh, uh, outprint. So it's, it's kind of cute. And I will just read you the names of the masters uh, who played this tournament. So Smyslov, Bronstein, Keres, Reshevsky, Petrosyan, Geller, Naidorf, Kotov, Taimanov, Taimanov Averbach, Boleslavsky, Sabo, Gligoric, Ove, and Stalberg. So you'll see all, all the names uh, are probably familiar to you. So uh, these are uh, very, very high level uh, masters. Uh, half of them are world champions. Um, and uh, David Bronstein is a very good annotator. So I, I, I recommend this book also. Okay, uh, so there, uh, all, there is also one uh, more recent uh, book. This is called uh, uh, the Mammoth Book, the Mammoth Book of the World's Greatest uh, Chess Games. Uh, so you, you will see uh, the, uh, this book contains uh, 125 games, and uh, they are uh, very well annotated with lots of uh, variations, but also with uh, textual explanations. So you'll find uh, Adolf Anderson, uh, you'll find Bobby Fischer, Kasparov. Uh, and, and so on. So you also find contemporary masters, old masters, uh, pre-Soviet masters. You, you can find many many games in this book, and it's you can see it's it's very it's very thick book. Um, the only objection I have with this book it uh, doesn't have a single game by Paul Morphy. I really don't know why because uh, Paul Morphy is my 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 personal favorite game, but uh, player. But uh, it doesn't matter. He he was an excellent positional player. And his games are uh, very much instructive, but okay, I, they probably have their, their reasons not to include Morphe in this collection. Okay, uh, so then you have um, uh, Irving Chernev. Uh, this is the this is not his um, uh, most known book. His known most known book is uh, Logical Chess Move by Move. I have this book on the Kindle, so I cannot show it, show it uh, like this. But this is also a good book, the most instructive games of chess ever played, 62 masterpieces of chess strategy. Uh, Chernev is a very, very good annotator, and uh, on this level uh, you can really learn much from, uh, from him. Uh, the problem with this book is that it doesn't have um, um, al algebraic uh, annotations, uh, algebraic notation, but uh, this old descriptive notation. And if you purchase... Um, his book, uh, Logical Chess, Move by Move, that it has uh, an edition with uh, algebraic annotations. And uh, here they are old, old annotations. You can see this, uh, for example, I don't know. So if you are not used to it, it's not very easy to uh, to go through uh, through the games, but uh, I think it's worth it. Okay. Um, then you can also uh, acquire or purchase a books uh, written by uh, masters themselves who play the game. And it can be very uh, useful uh, because you will uh, you, you get um, uh, in, inside their their inside thoughts. You you know how you, you get into their uh, head. You know how they they uh, thought during the game. What what were they thinking about uh, and why did they play the moves uh, they played? So I will recommend two of the, these books by very good writers. So first is. Uh, 
uh, the book written by uh, by Tal, uh, Michael Tal. Uh, so you probably know about Tal and you know who Batvenik is, uh, I suppose. So this is their uh, world champion match in uh, 1960. And uh, Tal wrote uh, uh, this book. And uh, the Tal is an uh, excellent uh, writer. Uh, not only that he annotates his uh, games very well, but uh, he also um, talks about his state of mind, uh, the, the psychology, uh, what was he thinking before the game, after the game, how was he preparing. And it's, it's a very, very interesting book, very, very good book. I, I recommend this. Another one, of course, classic by Bobby Fischer. My 16 memorable games, and um, this was written before Bobby Fischer became world champion, and uh, he included 60 games, uh, very well annotated. It's a very thick book, also, and uh, he also included some games which he lost, and you can also learn a lot of, uh, from Bobby Fischer. And finally, I want to recommend one book which is not a collection of the game, but also can help you to acquire. Uh, some uh, chess, chess knowledge. Uh, this is a small book by uh, Lev Albert. It's called uh, Chess Rules of Thumb. And in, in here he just... Um, can Something, I don't know, something. It looks like this when you open. So he just lists some uh, basic principles. Uh, some are connected to, to, to the positions. Uh, some are, see, there are, there are some diagrams even in there. So uh, some are connected, uh, uh, some are referring to positions, to the situations in the board, on the board, and uh, some uh, give just uh, some general uh, advice uh, about tournament play. Uh, for example, what to do if you blunder, uh, and uh, what should you eat before uh, the tournament and uh, during the game, and, and so on. So it's, it's a fun book. I, it's nice to have uh, beside the bed. Okay, so let's suppose you you have one or more of these books. So uh, how should you uh, study master master game? Uh, there are two ways uh, to study master games. Uh, the first uh, one is uh, this so-called two-step approach, and uh, this is the way uh, which I found most useful. So uh, the two-step approach uh, uh, to study master game is as following. Uh, in the first step, I just go through the game very fast, very quickly. Uh, quickly means I spend uh, 5 to 10 seconds after every move. So I don't just move the pieces, but I think a little just to see, um, just to get acquainted with the uh, position. And uh, then I play the game. So I move, uh, uh, I, I don't read annotations, I just uh, play the moves and try to spot in this 5 to 10 seconds a move, I try to spot some uh, basic uh, ideas and to see what uh, what the position is, uh, is about. So it's just to get acquainted with uh, the game. And uh, then it takes me, uh, let's say, 5 to 10 minutes. And then after that, in the second step, I go through the game slower. So I set the, the pieces back. I go uh, slower, uh, move by move. And I uh, this time I read the annotations. Uh, but... Um, how to read the annotations. Uh, I usually don't uh, give much attention to variations and some variations, sub variations. So I try to focus on the text textual part of annotations. Um, because my focus when I go through master games is to uh, get uh, positional understanding and not so much to uh, bother about tactics. And this is also one principle when you learn anything. So if you learn one thing, uh, focus on that one thing. Don't, uh, don't go uh, don't make uh, uh, digressions in your learning because your brain will be confused. So if you if you uh, studied the master game in order to learn some general chess principles and uh, elements of positional play, uh, then stick to it. Don't don't uh, don't go into deep tactical analysis because some annotators like to give uh, plenty plenty of variations, sub variations, and, and so on. And and you 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 don't need to. Uh, to go through through all that. So just read the annotations and try to understand um, basic uh, basic ideas and uh, principles. And also uh, some annotators uh, spend a lot of time talking about openings, opening theory. And uh, this is also uh, not, not important. Uh, first of all, uh, opening study is not important uh, for you, as I uh, spoke in the, in the previous uh, videos in this series. And uh, second of all, uh, again, you, you want to learn about positional understanding and positional ideas and not about openings. 
So don't confuse your brain. If you learn one topic, uh, stick to that uh, one topic. And uh, another way to go through uh, master games is to play so-called uh, solitaire chess. Um, so it's uh, it's also called guess the move. Uh, so how do you, do you do this? Uh, you uh, choose one side. You choose a winning side because you you want to play a uh, good good moves. So you choose a winning side. Let's say it's white, and then you play. You cover each each move uh, your side plays. So you play a move. You play a move uh, from your opponents, and then you try to guess. You think about the position, and you ch you try to guess uh, the next move. And uh, once you uh, you you guessed the the move, you you decided on your move. Uh, then write it down. Uh, write it down in the in the sheet like you would in the uh, in the normal uh, over the board tournament game. Uh, some people even use a, like to use a chess clock, so you can uh, say uh, you, you can uh, give you uh, give yourself uh, I don't know something like sixteen minutes for a game or nineteen minutes uh, ninety minutes, and then uh, then hit the clock every time you you write down the move. Uh, in this way. You sim simulate tournament conditions, and uh, it can also be uh, very useful. But the point is that when you decide on the move, you write it down on the sheet, and then you look in the book for the move uh, master played. And if the move is the same, okay. If if the move is different, just mark it. Just put a little dot on the uh, next to the move, and and move on. So uh, don't don't read annotations. Don't read any comments. You just uh, just play. Uh, just look at the moves and try to guess uh, every move, and and then after the game, after uh, of course, if, if you if you play uh, if you wrote down a different move, just mark it and play the move in the in the book the, the book move, and so uh, in this way you go through uh, through the game, and then after the game you compare your sheet with um, with the book moves, uh, you read the annotations of, of the game, of course. And you uh, focus on the, the moves which you uh, did wrong, so, so to say. So the moves uh, which were different than uh, what the master played. And then you, you when you so you stop on these moves and you try to figure out uh, why did master play this uh, this this uh, move different than you, and why was your move bad? If it was bad, maybe it was equally good. At this point, you can even use the engine. Uh, if you are really fascinated, I usually don't use the engine when I uh, play play on on the board, but uh, sometimes I am very fascinated by by position and I can't understand why uh, the master didn't play some move which seems obvious to me. Then I I put it on the engine and I uh, soon find out why. Okay, so uh, the second thing you can you can do um, besides uh, the reading books and uh, playing. Uh, on the physical board is to watch YouTube videos, uh, as you as you do now. Uh, so uh, watching videos is a more passive approach uh, than um, reading the book and playing the moves over the board, but it can also be very efficient. Uh, so uh, the basic idea is uh, just to watch masters lecturing about master games. So uh, when you want uh, when you watch a strong player, a grandmaster, international master lecturing about the game. You will uh, you will uh, meet lots of co concepts that you will uh, learn a lot. Uh, another thing you can watch is uh, uh, you can watch masters uh, play the game out loud. So they play the game and they uh, they commentate as they as they play. So uh, I can I, I mean YouTube is full of of these kind of videos, but I I can make some recommendations nevertheless. So uh, my favorite lecturer is uh, Grandmaster Ben Feingold. I I guess you you know who who Ben Feingold is. Uh, he his uh, lectures are very entertaining. He's uh, he, he has a very good sense of humor, and uh, it's also very uh, instructive. And uh, most of the time he lectures to the low rate of play rated players, so you can learn a lot of from from him. Um, I also like very much. Uh, uh, I am John Bartholomew's uh, channel, and he's climbing the rating ladder series, uh, which I think is maybe the best thing uh, on the YouTube on on this level, uh, the best thing you can watch. So you you watch um, uh, international master John Bartholomew uh, playing the lower rated rated players and uh, thinking out, out uh, thinking aloud while uh, he he plays, and this is very uh, very interesting. And also, he has uh, his uh, series uh, 
uh, a small YouTube series, uh, Chess Fundamentals, in which uh, he also plays uh, games with low-rated players and talks about some uh, fundamental chess concepts. You will find uh, also that uh, linked in the description below. And you can also check out uh, Dan Heisman. Uh, he's a very, very good coach and uh, uh, he, has, uh, he has very good videos. And I will uh, link uh, down uh, the series in which he plays with a uh, computer and uh, thinks out loud while he plays. So these are very good uh, ways of passive learning. Um, so even if you don't uh, pause the videos or uh, try to think actively, your brain will nevertheless absorb, uh, absorb the things uh, which, which you see. And uh, this is an uh, ideal um, for, for the times when you are tired, when, when you are not in the mood to uh, think very hard, but you still want to do some chess. So, for example, you, it's evening, uh, you have had a full-time job, you work all day, you're exhausted, and then uh, instead of watching some, I don't know, Netflix TV show or, or, or TV or something, you can watch uh, half an hour or hour on a YouTube video. And even if you are tired, uh, your brain will still absorb the concepts and you will, um, it, it will be useful for, for your chess. Uh, I have to say, I have a colleague in a club who started uh, to study chess seriously in his 20s, so he can also be considered an adult improver, and he reached uh, ill rating of uh, 2000 basically just by watching YouTube videos. But he, he did watch them a lot, um, but he, he played online chess, uh, he, he did some tactics, and he watched a lot of, lot of uh, YouTube videos and uh, he improved significantly. So, you know, this is this can be efficient as a part of your training, not, not only that. Okay, I think uh, this is all there is to it. Uh, I, I think I shared with you almost everything I know about uh, how to acquire uh, your uh, general chess knowledge. Um, so, the moral of the story is the more chess content content you expose yourself to, the better. So read books, uh, watch YouTube videos, and uh, your brain will do the next, uh, the rest. Uh, it's important, of course, to be persistent, to work day after day, and in, in this way, your brain will uh, adopt a new skill. Maybe not as fast as if you were a kid, but it will with time. Okay, I hope you'll find this video useful. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, be, uh, please be free to leave the comment and show your experience regarding your own chess improvement because we are all, all interested to hear uh, concrete uh, stories about uh, chess improvement. Uh, make sure to check out the video description. You can find all the links, everything I talked about in this video. You can find, uh, if you want to contact me, you can find contact details. If you want to support channel, you can find uh, the way to do this and so on. Okay, uh, stay with me and uh, see you next time. Cheers.